Welcome, everybody, to a brand new episode of Charge and Cruise. Today, we are doing another e-bike adventure, and we are going deep into the Redwood Forest on the hunt for Sasquatch. Nah, nah, I'm just kidding, guys. We're not hunting for Sasquatch today, but we are going into the Redwood Forest, and we are going not through road, but through railroad. So what we're going to do today is follow our railroad tracks that go deep into the Redwood Forest that ends in this place called Roaring Camp, which is kind of like a tourist destination. These old railroad tracks used to be used for logging and mining, but now they are just uh, used for tourist stuff like steam train rides down to the sea and down to the coast. So we are going to follow those tracks all the way through the forest. It should be a very scenic ride. I haven't ridden that train since I was a kid, so I don't know what is up there, what has changed, and I'm not sure how the tracks look nowadays. Hopefully there's no major bridges we have to cross, nothing dangerous like that. I definitely don't want a stand by me type situation where I'm racing against a train across a bridge. Either way, let's enjoy ourselves today. It's a brisk 55 to 60 degrees. Even though this bike has zero suspension, this is how confident I am in the Juice Strip Racer. Zero suspension and we're going up through a mountain path through railroad tracks. It's going to be a bumpy ride. I hope you guys enjoy it. We're just a few minutes until the entrance. Let's go. Well, we made it to the entrance, guys. I had to go up this huge incline here. And trust me, I tried, but the Juice Strip Racer could not make it up that thing. It was just slipping like crazy. Had to walk it up here using a little bit of throttle and walk mode. But here it is, guys, the entrance to the railroad tracks. I'm not sure about the whole legality of this adventure, but we're just gonna go. And if we see any no trespassing signs, we'll turn around. But so far, it looks like it's an easy little trail. Just going straight up ahead. We're gonna find out what's down there and let's just enjoy the scenery and have ourselves a nice little adventure. Let's get going. The only thing I'd be worried about on this trail is grass and very sharp rocks. I doubt I will have any reception once I get up into the deeper part of the redwoods. I'm just gonna take it slow. Definitely not trying to beat any land speed records and gonna be on the lookout for glass and you know, shards, stuff like that, nails, who knows. We're gonna see how far we can take it up here though. So far it looks pretty good. Now it is kind of like loose gravel, but the Rip Racer has plenty of grip with its knobbies. I definitely do not wanna be going off the side right here. You'd be going off into a ditch of poison oak. Hopefully we don't run into a train. Um, not sure if we will or not, but we'll see. Now I do have flat out on these tires and I do have a manual pump that is attached to this bike. So that's pretty much the only precautions I've taken as far as flats go. The further I am from the city, the less garbage, the less glass. So it's looking pretty nice right now, just dirt and gravel. But yeah, check out these redwoods, guys. They are huge. If it was super sunny, I'd definitely be having a little bit of a workout. But since it's cold, it's actually not that bad. And the Rip Racer is just plowing along this loose gravel. No suspension, no problem. This is certainly giving me an eerie feeling. Something about not being able to move left or right and just being able to go north or south is a little eerie. It's kind of like being stuck in a bottleneck. Not gonna lie, suspension would be nice. But like I said, the torque of the motor just keeps on plowing through. I'm having no trouble at all. But of course, I'm going slow, taking my time, taking the whole scene in. Oh, here comes a branch. Hey. <laughs> One thing I do like about riding these tracks so far is it's pretty flat. I guess railroad tracks have to naturally be flat because you know, trains and stuff. There is the highway that's right next to us. Normally that's where the bike GPS would tell you to go. But I'm telling you right now, there's no bike lane and it's just like a mountain road. Ooh, look at this. This is definitely a kind of a sketchy spot. Looks like a runoff. I'm gonna have to move the bike over onto the main tracks here because this spot 
Looks like it's been eroded. The tracks are a bumpy, bumpy ride. Oh geez, I am bouncing along all over the place. But as you can see, it's a really big drop down. And yeah, it looks like it's just eroding all throughout here, right into the freeway. I bet you a landslide is gonna happen here eventually. This is a bad spot to be stuck in if a train comes by. So let's get down the tracks into a more wider path. Look at all this loose gravel, man. I am surprised I am staying afloat on top of all this loose gravel. There's no way a regular bike could be able to do this. And oh man, Whew. that is a little bit of a nightmare fuel here. I'm gonna go ahead and walk this part. I don't know how loose this gravel is, but that is a long way down. Definitely gonna take the precautionary method here, at least until the path doesn't have such a sheer drop off on the ledge. Check this out, we got a downed bike here. Looks like a rally, most likely stolen. <laughs> the tires are actually still good. So I don't know why someone abandoned this here. We do have a bit of a homeless problem. So I have a feeling this bike was definitely stolen. I'm gonna move it off the side here so that it's not on the tracks, just in case a train comes through. But yeah, someone's rally. I'm gonna take a picture of this, post it on our uh, local city Reddit, and maybe someone can identify it and grab it. I think they abandoned it because down there is a bridge and it looks like a stand by me situation. We're gonna have to cross it if we want to continue. It's gonna be a little precarious, but I'm taking you guys with me. Let's get it done. So let's check it out. Yeah, it's definitely a bridge crossing. I can at least go down, but I don't know if I'd be able to go back on the tracks after that, but definitely a bridge crossing that we're gonna have to try to maneuver. Oh no, there's a trail on the other side. Okay, we won't have to cross it. We'll go down into the ditch right here and go under and around it. But man, how crazy would this be to cross this? Oh yeah, there's little gaps in between these tracks and it's a long way down. So for sure not crossing that on a bike, I'm glad we can go around it. Let's put the brakes to work here and let's try to go down easily. Definitely not trying to bomb this hill. It's quite slippery. Woo. All right, I lied. The trail was simply too steep so we are going on foot oh boy feeling a little crazy and this is definitely the situation i wanted to avoid the stand by me situation where you have to cross a railroad bridge before a train comes along but to be honest i've been crossing trestles since i was a kid because i used to cross it to go home almost every day and i got so good we used to actually race across these uh tracks at least with those tracks, it was over water, so I felt a little safe, but we are getting through it. Oh boy. Whew. And we are across. Oh my goodness. Things I do for this channel. Let's go. More bumpy tracks ahead. Oh boy. Super uncomfortable. I'm going to have to walk this part until I can find a, a trail off to the side that's a little easier. Because look at this thing. It is just bouncing along all right we are back on gravel now I feel like a little bit of a tank dirt feels nice man even though it's slipping a little bit we are at a decent pace we have transitioned into dirt and although it's nicer it's more slipperier a lot of loose dirt here oh man it's like sand almost finally flat ground <laughs> or flatter ground Surprisingly, we've only seen just two people out here and that was back when they were crossing the bridge. Other than that, it's been pretty empty. Yeah, we got a little bit of a clearing here. This is a much more easier terrain. So yeah, this railroad just, it's cutting through the redwoods. It's really just a sublime experience. And I'm not sure if the train is running today. Usually they have like 30 minute intervals, but I haven't seen a train at all. And looks like they're building or maybe deconstructing part of the railroad right here. Oh, well, I guess that's it, guys. We finally reached our first no trespassing sign. Violators will be prosecuted. 
I'm not into breaking the law, so we're gonna turn around. It looks like it just continues on towards the uh, Roaring Camp. I'm not sure how far we made it. I feel like we were just like one or two miles away from it, but you know what? I'm gonna adhere to the signs and turn around. For the most part, we experienced what riding long tracks was like. There are some very precarious spots. Even this spot is a little precarious. You can see it's just loose gravel, goes straight down into a ditch and there's the highway down there. But we're gonna turn around because we are not about to trespass and we have pretty much gotten that full Redwood Forest experience. I'm gonna take my time and just soak it all in. Man, the Juice Rip Racer tires definitely held up. I mean, it was slipping at times on the dirt and the gravel, but that's to be expected. I don't think any tire would not be slipping at that point. But comfort-wise, even with no suspension, we did all right. Just goes to show you how far fat tire knobbies can go and take you. But we're just gonna walk it back now and maybe have a little snack and just take in this forest. Now, I'm no expert, but these tracks look a little feline to me, especially this one. This one's freaking huge. This is my hand. Let me know, guys, those track experts out there. Maybe it's just a dog, but for some reason, like, look at that. That's definitely claws, right? Um, we do get mountain lions out here, cougars. Now things got a little more eerie. I'm glad I didn't do this during the dusk. That would be sketchy, but we are headed out of here now. And we're going to continue on. It's probably easier to see how sheer of a drop-off it is from this side. We are still making our way back. Look at that road. That road is no divider, one single lane, blind turns everywhere. I don't know how anybody would bike up here besides using the tracks. Just wanted to show you guys the road. Let's get going. I gotta say, for as bumpy and loose as the gravel and the dirt has been on this trail so far, I'm pretty surprised that the Rip Racer is powering through it. It's nice that it has a short wheelbase, so for those really tough spots, you can really slow it down and still feel like you have control of the bike. The rear wheel did slip a couple times in like that like silty, sandy dirt material, but for the most part, it's been just cruising. In any case, I'm still enjoying the ride, and man, the air out here is super nice, but one of the more unique trails that I have ridden, if you can even consider this a trail. This whole trail might have been slightly uphill because I haven't pedaled in a while and I'm just kind of coasting down. I thought it was flat the whole time, but I think it has a very, very, very slight downhill incline, which is pretty nice. I can just focus on trying to maintain my balance and going through the rivets in the path. You're picking up a little speed now. Oh, little ground squirrel. Here's a nice section of the railroad. You can really see how it just cuts through into the town there. I'm seeing cars, so we're nearly out of here. So now I gotta look out for a glass because, man, it's... Oh, there's another squirrel. Look at that guy. Because now we're just back in town. And I don't know what it is. People just love breaking bottles on railroad tracks. <laughs> you want to race, buddy? You want to race? Nope. All right, I have definitely put some wear and tear on these tires though, going through all that pretty much sharp gravel the whole time. So yeah, we are back in town, pretty much where we started. Let me go ahead and check the Strava stats to see exactly how far we rode the bike. This is where I came in from. Oh my gosh, almost ran into the rail. This is where I came in from. Let's check the Strava stats now to see exactly how far we biked. Okay, looks like not very far at all. Spent about an hour up here and only biked 4.75 miles. So definitely not too far, but it was definitely a slower pace. To take an hour to do five miles, that's uh, yeah, pretty slow pace. Average speed, 5.3. But yeah, thank you again, guys, for joining me on this little adventure. Decided, hey, you know what? I've never been up there. I might as well try it out and see what it's all about. Unfortunately, there was private property up there no trespassing signs started popping up, so we turned around. But as always, thank you for tuning in. I got a couple surprises on this channel coming up. 
and we might have landed our first sponsor. We will see in a few days or in a few videos, depending. If you don't mind, hit the like and subscribe button for me. If you rock with me, throw down a comment, and I will see you guys on the next e-bike adventure or delivery ship video. Until then, take care, farewell.